Yo, what's good everyone? Your boy Deke back again with another vid. And this one, I wanted to do a comparison video. Chase Claypool, Mapletron versus Calvin Johnson, Megatron. And everyone's talking about how good Chase Claypool's rookie year has been. 10 total touchdowns. He's in the mix for Offensive Rookie of the Year. And those are all true. I mean, I've watched every Steeler game. Any Steeler fan that has watched every game up to this point knows that Chase Claypool is a difference maker. I was just curious because, you know, his nickname's Mapletron. It comes from Megatron. So I figured why not look at Chase Claypool's numbers from his rookie year and stack them up against Calvin Johnson's rookie year because obviously that is the only thing we can go off of. Chase Claypool has only been in the league for 10 games. So this is, it's not a premature comparison. A premature comparison would be is if you're saying like, oh, could Claypool become Calvin Johnson? Is he going to be better than Calvin Johnson? One, we don't know that. Calvin Johnson was like the best receiver in the NFL for the time he was in the NFL. So that's a tall task. Um, why not let's just look at what Chase Claypool's doing his rookie year and look at what Calvin Johnson did his rookie year and see how they stack up. All right, so Mapletron's stats. 559 yards, eight touchdowns, receiving 10 total touchdowns. This is through 10 games in the NFL. Megatron stats. 48 receptions, 756 yards, and four touchdowns. So if we just look at the stats right there, there's an argument to say Claypool already has the better rookie season than Megatron. So there's a few things that go in Megatron's favor when you're talking about rookie seasons and impact. One, his quarterback's a lot worse, so he had John Kitna for his rookie season. Although he did throw for over 4,000 yards. The talent around him is definitely not as good as the Steelers' talent around Chase Claypool. So the Lions receivers at the time, Sean McDonald, Roy Williams, and Mike Furry, Fury. I guess that's how you pronounce it. So that's not the strongest cast of receivers. Although Roy Williams was solid for a little bit. I don't even recognize the other two names. Maybe Sean McDonald, I kind of recognize. But Mike Ferry, he actually had a pretty decent season that year too, which is weird. So you have those two things, John Kitna as his quarterback, obviously a worse quarterback than Big Ben, and then less receiver talent around him. And then number three is actually interesting and weird to say because it makes me feel old, but uh, the era that Calvin Johnson played football in, he came into the league at 2007, it's completely different than what it is right now, 2020. 13 years later, It's that's just crazy to, to say. So Megatron, 756 yards and four touchdowns is actually the second best rookie receiving season that year. Dwayne Bowe had the best. He had almost 1,000 yards and five touchdowns. And then you just have Ted Ginn at 420 yards, four touchdowns. Robert Meacham, 289 yards, three touchdowns. Sidney Rice, 396 yards, four touchdowns. James Jones, 676, two touchdowns. That was about it, man. So in comparison, you look at Chase Claypool in 2020 and how he stacks up with the other rookie receivers in the league and just kind of goes to show the different eras of football. So he has the 559 yards, 8 touchdowns, 10 total touchdowns. Justin Jefferson has almost 1,000 yards. He's like top 5 or 6 in the league in receiving yards right now. Jerry Judy at 589 yards. T. Higgins over 600 yards. C.D. Lamb. 629 yards, Brandon Ayuk's up there. So you look at those numbers right there, those are already better than full seasons from those guys back in 2007. I just find that interesting whenever you look back, outside of the raw stats, there's like three things that are in Megatron's favor if you wanna kinda go outside of the stats and try to bring in some context. And then there was, I think, one or two things I wanted to bring up too, whenever we're talking about eras, so I look back a little bit, and you can even look at some guys like Hall of Famers, all-time GOAT receivers. Larry Fitzgerald had 780 yards, 8 touchdowns. Terrell Owens, 540 yards, 4 touchdowns. I don't think those were viewed as like awful rookie seasons. If anything, I think they were viewed as good rookie seasons, especially Fitzgerald. But now, I mean, you have these guys, 4 or 5 receivers, they're going to be hitting close to 1,000 yards. Chase Claypool, double-digit touchdowns. It's just crazy. There was a turning point somewhere. I didn't do too much research into it, but in my mind, I would say it's whenever Julio Jones and A.J. Green came into the league. They both posted Julio Jones, 959 yards, 8 touchdowns. A.J. Green, 1,057 yards, and 7 touchdowns. I think after that, that was like 2010 or 2011, it became more and more common for receivers, skill position players to get over 1,000 yards and just have like really great rookie seasons and become almost 
top 10, top 20 receivers in the league. You think of like Odell Beckham. There's probably countless guys you could name from the past decade where rookie receiver comes in. Ah, hey, this isn't like too much of a surprise anymore. So yeah, I just thought it, I thought it'd be interesting just to compare the two, their rookie seasons. Um, obviously, I'd be taking Claypool, but um, you're talking career. That's going to be tough to beat with Calvin Johnson. Like I said, probably the best receiver in the league over the course of his career. But we'll uh, we'll see how Claypool's career plays out. I mean, he's on pace right now, just after rookie season. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the vid and uh, stay chilling. Peace.